we're going to now extend this notion of probabilities, and we're going to look at them a little bit differently. We're going to both look at discrete probabilities, and then a little bit later on, we're going to look at continuous probabilities. And this gets a little bit more practical, because uh, we're going to be dealing with events that will actually occur. A discrete random variable is a categorical random variable, such as gender or eye color or the count of number of chairs. That's what we call discrete random variables, because discrete means separate. Thus, each entry or numerical value is separated from the others. The numbers between each value are therefore meaningless, like 1.5 chairs. I'm sure some of you may have looked at, you know, census numbers and the average uh, number of children for a family is 2.3 kids. And you're like, wait a minute, where's the 0.3 kids, you know, come from? That doesn't exist. These values are really then going to be discrete. These are small, countable numbers. And probabilities like these can be assessed for discrete values and are, are very good in terms of analysis. Consider a set of data for a number of people entering a coffee shop between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. Counting the number of people each hour provides a probability distribution. That's what we're going to call it. And we're going to visualize this probability for these customers entering a shop. Because that graph over to the right is going to tell us, oh, I know there's more people are going to come in that middle bar. At 9 a.m., eight customers came in. At 10 a.m., it was 10 customers. At 11 a.m., it was 15, and so forth. So we can now map this out. And just by doing some very simple uh, calculations, because there are 54 total events, we know that the 9 a.m. hour, there's a 14.8% chance of someone coming in from the, for the day. And the distribution in the middle of the day at 11 o'clock is 27% of, of the whole branch of customers between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. These probabilities are called discrete random variable probabilities. Now, a continuous random variable is one in which the numbers are purely numerical. And we'd like to say that the numbers between the numbers actually have meaning. Thus, we will have a probability assessed. Consider a person's height, which could range 56 to 80 inches. These are continuous because the numbers between each whole number are valid, such as 67.5, 68.56, and so forth. It is possible to assess a probability to every single number in the continuous unbroken curve. In the discrete example, we saw those breaks in the bar chart. A continuous chart will resemble a smooth, unbroken curved line. In the example below, the average height of a person in the United States is 70 inches, with a standard deviation of 3 inches. And we'll look at that standard deviation a little bit later. It's just allowing me to draw the curve here. The curve can be generated using any statistical package, which in this case, this graph was done in arts, not as easily or even possible in some cases to do in Excel but you won't have to worry about that. Probabilities can be computed for every possible value. The curve is smooth, demonstrating that every possible x has a corresponding probability denoted by the y-axis. The dashed lines here are for what those standard deviations are. It's the spread around that center line, but again, we'll deal with that later. These probabilities are called continuous random variable probabilities. Now, in our entire discussion on probabilities, we had discussed that all probabilities will be a number between 0 and 1, and that if we add all of them together, it will add up to 1. And that's what this formula says. It says that we're going to take the sum of every event, its probability, and it will add up to 1. And each one of those events has a probability between 0 and 1 inclusive. As probabilities are added, we have this notion of cumulative probability. From the equation above, since all the probabilities are add, added up will equal 1, we can successively add each previous probability and get larger and larger and larger up until we get to 1. So if a subset of events are added together, the cumulative probability rolling a 1, 2, or 3 on a dice, as an example, the cumulative probability would be 3 sixths or 1 half. Because again, we have probability of x equals 1 is 1 sixth, probability of x equals 2 is 1 sixth, probability of x equals 3 is 1 sixth. Therefore, the probability of 1, 2, or 3, or 3 happening is going to be the probability of x less than or equal to 3, which is going to equal 1 half. One example of the cumulative probability distribution is the normal curve. So below, we have a graphical example of this curve. From the graph, 
if a line is drawn at the mean in the center, it splits the curve in half, where 50% of the curve is below and 50% is above. Therefore, you can show that the probability of x less than mu, or the average, is 0.5. And this is our probability distribution. But looking at it more closely, on the right side now, we can demonstrate what the cumulative probability looks like. The graph on the right shows that the midpoint, 50% of the probability, is accounted for at that zero. That red dashed line is 50%. And so the average here is zero. If we drew a straight vertical line to it, you'd see that it would line up right to that 50%. As we continue adding more, the probability would then continue to increase because it is adding all previous probabilities. So the probability of being less than 2 is going to be somewhere around 95% or 0.95 in this area. And we get what's known as this S-curve. <laughs>